Hey, Frank James, FJ here. Have you ever thought about your shadow side? What we're talking about is that part of your personality which you are not consciously aware. It is the unknown part of you, but it is very real and maybe this part is scary, so grab a barf bag just in case you're the kind of person who throws up when you get nervous. The people around you see your shadow side. They very well could know all about it, but frighteningly, you don't. You can't see it. And of course, you don't know what you don't know. I mean, try it out. Name something that you don't know that you don't know. I'll wait. Okay, Frank, I get it. So how am I supposed to figure out this whole shadow thing? Stop teasing me with this really long introduction. And what does it even have to do with the 16 Myers-Briggs personalities? Well, I'm glad you asked that. The psychoanalyst Carl Jung, who outlined the eight psychological types, which Myers and Briggs later developed into the 16 personalities, wrote at length about the shadow. And now I, YouTuber Frank James, will vastly oversimplify. <laughs> no doubt making many people angry in the comments. One thing our boy Jung said about the shadow is that much of it consists of negative aspects of ourselves which we are blind to and then project onto other people. It's the psychological equivalent of whoever smelt it dealt it, sort of. Maybe not really when you think about it. <laughs> and each personality type has a particular blind spot, something which they are not seeing in themselves. And that is their shadow. The way to confront it, ask yourself some tough questions. Now I'm gonna ask each type some questions. They might ring true to you, or they might not. <laughs> Even people of the same type are not gonna be in the exact same place in their lives. Unless you're like conjoined twins, in which case you would literally be in the exact same place in your lives. So, what do you project out into the world? What do you not want to see about yourself? What is your shadow? Before we continue, let's warm things up a bit. I'm having too much fun with <laughs> Let's support this channel and let me tell you about this video sponsor, BetterHelp. Life is tough, okay, and your mental health is extremely important. So if you're struggling with a lot of stress or a transition period in your life, something that you want to talk through with a professional and get some help, BetterHelp just might be the perfect solution for you. BetterHelp is an amazingly convenient alternative to traditional in-person talk therapy. You don't even have to change out of your sweatpants and into real people close to get your therapy. Signing up for BetterHelp is quite easy. You just answer a few questions that will help you get paired up with the right counselor. Once you sign up, you get matched within 24 hours to a totally legit licensed and certified therapist for counseling sessions via video or phone calls on your computer, tablet, or cell. You can even text with your therapist. Very convenient. BetterHelp is available worldwide, not yet outside of Earth though, so aliens, I am so sorry. Plans start at $65 a week and financial aid is available for the, the financial aid is available for those who qualify and it's easy to apply for financial aid when you sign up. BetterHelp is not for everyone. If you are in crisis, please check out my link to crisis resources in the description below. Okay, here's something really upsetting. Most most people wait a long time after they start experiencing negative mental health issues before they seek professional help. I'm talking years and that legitimately makes me sad because I was one of those people. I wasted so much time feeling crappy. So if you think you need help, don't hesitate. Talk to a mental health professional. Go to my link in the description below for 10% off BetterHelp. Thanks to BetterHelp for being a continued sponsor of this channel. Okay, let's get back into some mood lighting here. All right, here are some questions for you to ask yourself based on which of the 16 personalities you are to begin to discover your shadow. Get, get your barf bags ready. And you know, 95% of the time, your shadow may be hidden. And 75% of statistics are made up off the top of people's heads. So think of those few times when you were under a lot of stress and maybe acted in a way that felt uncharacteristic of you. That could very well be your shadow. It's part of you, 
but only comes out during these moments. Just like a groundhog who's only afraid of his shadow on February 2nd. I think. That's how, <laughs> that's how Groundhog Day works, right? ESTJs and ENTJs, you might be looking out at people around you and think, people are so emotional, they make irrational decisions, they're overly sensitive, they're so withdrawn, they're a bunch of crybabies. So ask yourself, ESTJ or ENTJ watching this, when do you let your emotions get the best of you? Why do you blow up with intense emotion as though you are a volcano? erupting on the unsuspecting citizens of Pompeii. Why are you so sensitive to criticism? For ENFJs and ESFJs, you might think to yourself that other people are jerks. They're critical, they're mean, they're picking on you, they're pessimistic, they're selfish. So here's an awkward question, ENFJ or ESFJ watching this, when have you been a jerk to other people. Why do you selfishly steamroll over others' emotions? Why do you get cynical? Why do you get cold and dismissive? Could it be your shadow? ESFPs and ESTPs, you may look at e at the uh, uh, <laughs> you may look at others and think, man, everyone gets so negative about the future. People are so disconnected from reality. They're caught up with all this anxiety rather than enjoying life. <laughs> People are so dumb. But think about it, ESTP and ESFP. Why do you do those very things? Those times when you think the future is just a dark void of negativity. When you stop paying attention to what is real, what is right in front of you, and instead you freak out over what might happen at some point. Why? For ENFP and ENTP, I know how you guys roll, okay? You think you're so cool. You're, you're looking at everyone else and saying, man, they're uptight and controlling. Just trying to tell everyone else what to do. <laughs> Stupid. Hey, guess what? That's your shadow. Why do you get so bossy and controlling over stupid stuff that doesn't even really matter? Like, you step in and try to tell everyone how they're doing something incorrectly when, like, nobody cares. It's inconsequential. And everyone's aware of this when you do it. But you aren't. Because it's your shadow. Before we continue, let's stop momentarily and see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for sitting through that. And if you're enjoying yourself, hit the like button. For the ISTPs and INTPs out there, you probably see others as being smothering, overly open with their emotions, making dumb decisions because it seemed to be what everyone thought sounded good, even though it made zero sense. But there are times, ISTPs and INTPs, where you do this too, where out of nowhere, you just start dumping your negative emotions on people, being overly critical of others, maybe even trying to shame them. You make silly decisions that make no sense. It may not happen often, but it's a part of you. For ISFPs and INFPs, maybe the world to you seems to be filled with people who are bullies and they're trying to tell you what to do all the time and everyone is cruel and disconnected from their emotions. People have no values. But all of this is within you too, ISFPs and INFPs. You can bully people around, you can be cruel and emotionless, and sometimes you can totally abandon your most closely held values if it will get you the outcome you want. It's hard, it's hard to hear, right? <laughs> you guys are such sensitive types, but you've gotta realize You've got that shadow within you. ISFJs and ISTJs, to you, other people may seem flighty. They, they, they just don't get serious about life or whatever, whatever we're doing here. They're weird. They're just too willing to shake up everything and live in total chaos. But guess what, you orderly ISFJs and ISTJs, you have that chaos within you. Why is it, <laughs> why is it that you sometimes throw everything out the window and then make everyone else pick up the pieces after you? Why is it that you sometimes bring up these totally weird and outlandish ideas about what will happen in the future? Huh? Could it be your shadow? To the INTJs and INFJs watching, people around you might appear to be erratic, impulsive, 
there's a loud car going by. Impulsive, overindulgent even. They don't think about the future enough. People are too busy creating chaos right now. They don't look at things very deeply. They're caught up with all this superficial stuff. But guess what, INFJs and INTJs, you do this too. Oh yes you do. Don't try to tell me you don't. There are times when the people around you are like, why, why did she do that random thing without thinking about the consequences? Why is he acting like a wild man? Why is she so caught up in and freaked out by these inconsequential details. Your shadow may only come out in flashes every once in a while. So I'm not suggesting that this is how you behave all the time. However, your shadow is a part of you. And in order to become the best version of yourself that you can be, you need to recognize your shadow and own it. Or it may end up owning you. Once again, go to betterhelp.com slash frankjames for 10% off licensed counseling. Check out Another video right here. <laughs> Another video right here, or the whole playlist right here. And until next time, stay cool and attractive. I guess this video could be just titled Frank Plays with Lights for, <laughs> for 10, 15 minutes, however long this video ends up being.